Hello and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to build a text classifier or a text classification system using text blob. What is a text classifier or a classification system? Imagine you have a lot of data and you want to put them in different categories. For instance, you have news items, you want to put them into sports, politics, business, tech, and, and, and these categories. Or movies, you want to put them in different genres, action, drama, comedy, thriller, books, the same. Or sentiment, to put your customer reviews into positive or negative. So this is how a classify, well, this is what text classification is. That is to categorize text. Now, there are a lot of ways to do that and a lot of algorithms to do this. I'm going to use uh, Naive Bayes, which uh, text blob provides. It's very easy in just a couple of lines of code and you, you will have a great classifier. Now, this is how it basically works. I'm going to explain it here first and then I will go to a decoding environment. Now, you need to have a training set, a training data, and your training data uh, consists of the text and the label. In this case, for example, we have a comment and we have positive or negative, only two labels. So every sentence has been labeled manually. Then you are going to feed this into the machine and um, the classifier tries to figure out what does it mean for something to belong to this label? So based on the probabilities of, for example, there is love in this one here and there's some relationships between these words here, so it belongs to positive. So later, if I have a sentence like, uh, they loved the food, it says, oh, okay, based on what I've learned from all these positive sentences, it belongs to the same category or negative. Then once you have this training, you need to have a test set as well to just evaluate the accuracy. So once it is trained, the classifier, then you are going to pass in the te test data, which is again with comments and labels manually uh, put in there. Then it will check the beer was good, it tries to figure out itself, the, f the beer was good, it says positive, okay, next one, negative maybe, and they will check against the um, these labels, and then it will say, okay, I just had 70% uh, accuracy. So that's how it basically works. Now, we are going to use, as I said, the text blob classifier, which is going to use a naive Bayes, so we are going to use that. Now let's get to the coding environment first. We are going to pip install uh, text blob and again also the uh, corpora, text blob .download underscore corpora. After that we are going to import naive base classifier from text blob .classifiers. Remember uh, there's uppercase N and uppercase B and uppercase C here. Okay, just as the example, later I'm going to show you how to use um, CSV with some kind of large data set as well. Now, here, this is our training data in the same format, a list of tuples separated by commas. Now, then is, this is also our test data. So we are going to use a naive by naive by base classifier class and pass in the train the training data set, which is just six, that's it. And CL is going to be now having access to the classify method. So if I introduce a new sentence here and ask it to classify this new sentence based on this training set, it will say, uh, let me get rid of this one now. So let's just run this and now Let's run this one and it says it's negative. So we had horrible food because it says, okay, there was horrible in the negative one and also here as well. So it means there's the probability, the likelihood of this sentence belonging to negative is high. 
I remember this is super small, this is ridiculously small um, compared to the ones that you should have. But this is how it works. And in order to check the accuracy, simply CL dot accuracy, accuracy of what? Of the test data. And if I run this one, you would see that we have 100% accuracy. This is easy, right? But normally you should aim for something above 70%. With large data sets, 70% upwards is a uh, good number. All right. Now, what if you want to update your data? Let's say you have new data now to add. You can simply store them somewhere, again, in the same format. And CL, that is our classifier, this one, dot update and pass in the new data. And then you can check again. So this is the basic of how it works. But now I'm going to use this data set provided by Vivek on Kaggle. Uh, I've just downloaded that. It is a data set of, um, uh, let's just take a look at the, at here. You can see there is ID here, there's comments, and there's topic, biology, physics, and chemistry. So we have comments here of users belonging to one of these, like either biology, this one, it belongs to physics, and this one belongs to chemistry. I have downloaded that, and I've reduced the number uh, to only 2,000 rows, and I have deleted this ID column as well for both train and um, for test data. Now I have put them here inside the uh, Google Colab, and this is how it works. So we are going to open the train CSV in the reading mode and the encoding for this CSV is Latin 1 as F. So F refers to this CSV now, the train. Now we are going to pass in, just as we did here, we are going to pass in to our naive base classifier F, that is the file, and we can specify also the format as CSV. You can also uh, put in um, JSON as well. Once we have created our classifier, we should run this, and it's gonna take a well, some seconds. Uh, it depends on how large your data set is. This one is not that big, only 2,000 rows, so it's gonna take maybe less than a minute. After that, once we have created our classifier, we can also check the accuracy of that classifier by opening our test file now. So the test file, if I double click on it, you can see again it is like comments here and topics on this side. So we're opening the test CVSV in the reading mode, this is the encoding as F, and I'm going to print CL, the classifier, dot accuracy. I'm going to check the accuracy of classifier with regard to this test file F, and the format is CSV. And you can see I get 71% accuracy. So that's that's not bad. Uh, this is not great, but it's not bad. Normally from 70% upwards, it's considered okay. And um, you can of, of course increase the, the volume of this data set and you might see better results. Now just to check, I have also created a text. I'm skeptical, a heavier lid would be needed to build pressure. Uh, I feel like I'm missing something here. So I wanna predict which category this text belongs to. So I'm going to add the classify method to the classifier and pass in this text and I get physics, which is actually correct. Another feature is to uh, get the uh, informative features of uh, this classification. So if you add this show informative features to a method to classifier and you specify like five of them, then you get the most informative features uh, that can be decisive in uh, kind of uh, specifying if something belongs to physics, biology or, or chemistry. It gives us this back, so we have, uh, if it contains physics, then the likelihood of it being in physics is just like almost 27 times uh, biology. If it contains removed, it is more likely that it's in physics. Uh, if it contains the word data, again, physics. If it contains the word force, 
it's more likely it's in physics so this is something that uh, you should consider as well okay this was a very very simple and very quick way to create a custom um, naive Bayes classifier using text blob and uh, it had this accuracy of 71 percent you can also check with some uh, bigger data sets and see how it works uh, i hoped you i hope you liked the video if you did please just leave a like or a comment or share thank you for watching and listening